Hello and welcome to this video. This is another video on Spacey and some of the cool things that you can do with it. Over the past couple months, Spacey has been putting out on Twitter and on the repo all these different really cool projects. And we're going to explore one of them right now, which comes from Pandora Intelligence, and it's called Classy Classification. Real quickly, the entire idea behind this project is that you can use Spacey and with just a few sample sentences, you can do fuchsia text classification. So that what this means is that with just a, a little bit of data, you can actually go through and relatively quickly get a classifier up and working. So what I'm going to do in the first part of this video is walk through the installation, how you get everything set up. It's very simple. If you've installed Spacey, the hard part's already done. And then I'm going to walk through this kind of demo example that they give us. And the big question we're going to be asking is how well does this scale? How well does it work on different projects, like in real world data? And we're going to tackle this with, uh, again, the Harry Potter text. As a historian, I typically use this for historical documents. I can assure you it works just as well there. But I thought since probably a wider amount of the audience is familiar with Harry Potter than, let's say, uh, some domain specific text like South African documents, we're going to stick with something that more people will be familiar with. So let's go ahead and just jump up to how you install and get everything set up. You're going to just run pip install classy classification. If you're working within a Jupyter notebook, remember you can use an exclamation mark and run pip install classy, very important here, dash classification. And once you have that installed, everything should import nicely, especially if you already have Spacey 3 installed. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just import both Spacey and Classy underscore classification. Import both of those. And then I'm going to pop back over here and we're going to kind of just work with the sample data that they give us right out of the gate so we can kind of explore how it works and why. So what we have here is an object called data. And this is important. Data is a dictionary. Now this dictionary will have multiple keys and these keys will correspond to your labels. So these are the, the categories that you want to work into your text classifier, the classes. And then these keys are going to have a value that is going to be equal to a list. And each index, so each item in the list, will be a, a, a string. And that string really should be a sentence or uh, maybe a couple sentences of something that corresponds to that label. And as you're going to be able to see, you really don't need a lot to work with here. And if you don't feel comfortable st uh, structuring everything like, as a dictionary within Python or as a JSON file outside of Python, don't worry. We're going to be doing it in, later in this video with just a text file. So you can just kind of write everything on a new line in a text file and split it up. It's a lot easier than working with within Python to create your data. The next bit of code that we have here is we're going to be working with the NCore WebMD model. This is the medium model for the English language from Spacey. As we're going to see, it's going to present some issues, uh, mainly because it's not as good as another method, which we're going to see in just a second. If you need to download it, uh, you can run uh, Python M Spacey download NCore WebMD, and that'll download the medium model. I'm actually executing this right now because I can't remember if I've already downloaded it in this repo, and it looks like I actually have. Fantastic. So let's just go ahead and scroll all the way down. Um, the next thing that you see here is add pipe from the repo. Again, this is copied straight from the original repo here. All this line is doing, this nlp.addPipe, is it's adding in this text categorizer. Once you install Classy Classification, you'll have the ability to add this pipe in. And this config component right here, this, this value, is assigned to exactly what to do with that text categorizer. The data will correspond to your uh, label data that we have up here for the quick classification. And the models in the model will correspond, if you're working with a spacey model, to spacey. And let's go ahead and execute this. As you can see, this classifier is designed to recognize furniture and kitchen. And the goal here is that when we look for something in the kitchen appliances, it'll have a little bit of, of both kind of components here. We see it strongly relating to kitchen at 63% and only 36% relating to furniture. Again, this is a dummy example. It, it's nice because it kind of demonstrates the, the application of this idea. But let's go ahead back to that repo and run this again and with a much better system in place we're going to be using i'll copy and paste it over and then kind of explain what we're doing we're going to work with the exact same data but we're going to make a different model 
So notice here we have a couple different things added. Again, we start off with a blank spacey model. And again, we're going to be adding a text categorizer. Again, we're adding the same data. But our model here is very different. Uh, this might look a little unfamiliar to you if you haven't worked with anything other than spacey. What this is doing is it's going into the Hugging Face library, uh, so a Python library called Sentence Transformers put out by Hugging Face, and it's grabbing their multilingual uh, BERT model, essentially, so that you can leverage the power of a much larger uh, model that has a much deeper understanding of language, particularly when it comes to things like homonyms, uh, words that have the same spelling but mean something different depending on context. And device here, we can specify GPU, uh, if you don't know if you have the GPU that's available, just do CPU for right now. It'll be a little slower, but you're going to have the exact same accuracy. And let's go ahead and create and run this model over this same sentence. And we get something that's much, what I would consider, much more accurate. Um, so what we actually have is that furniture is, is ticked a little bit lower and kitchen is ticked much higher. Now one of the things you might be noting, noticing right out of the bat is that uh, for those of you who are more math inclined, you'll notice that the numbers on the left for furniture add up with the numbers on the right for kitchen to equal one. This is because the way this model works is it's designed that the total of all labels must equal one. Meaning you have to get the one somehow. So if a if a sentence is given in front of it that it doesn't really think fits into either one of the categories, you'll oftentimes see them around a high 40, low 50s back and forth, which means that it doesn't really align well with either one of the categories. Something to keep in mind, we're going to talk about thresholding in just a second. So that's generally how uh, this new kind of project works with Spacey. But the big question is, the one I had when I was first looking at it, this is this is well and good, it, it works well with this data. How well does, well does it work with real data? And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick look at real data. So this is the uh, first book of Harry Potter. Again, it's in the repo. Feel free to, uh, to use it. Uh, so what this is, it's cleaned up a little bit where each paragraph is on a new sentence with a double line break. And then what I did was I used three synonyms for fear. Uh, so fear, afraid, and scared, and I only grabbed three random sentences. I didn't put any thought into what I grabbed. I just wanted to have a couple different words that express the concept of fear in Harry Potter. And so what we have here is uh, this sentence deals with the word fear. This one contains the word afraid, and this one has the word scared. This way, the, the text classifier can kind of get a broader sense of what we consider to be fear as a label, and that's what I'm using. So let's pack back over to our live coding. And if you want to look at the formal uh, file here, check out the, the YouTube uh, Python file. That's going to be the one that actually is more cleaned up. This is just for live coding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new data object here. And so I'm going to delete kitchen. I'll keep I'll leave furniture in just so that there is another class in there. If you have to have at least two classes. Otherwise, it'll just be assigning one to the uh, one category. So I've got data created. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in this fear text file into this data dictionary. So I'm going to say with open data fear.txt read as f. And I'm going to say fear is equal to uh, f dot read dot split lines. And let's take a look at that. If you notice, it's now exactly what we want. It's a list of different sentences. So I can say data fear, so add a new key to that dictionary, equals fear. And now when I print off data, we see that we've got data inserted into this dictionary exactly as we want, where it's its own label, the label of fear, with its own three sentences. So now all we have to do at this stage is we just have to recreate this entire pipeline. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste. Always bad practice, but for right here, we're not going to worry about it too much. And we're going to go ahead and create this new model. And again, we're loading it up on the CPU. While that's doing that, we need to have another model. Because what I want to do is I want to use this model, iterate over all of Harry Potter. And then what I would like to do is I'd like to find the sentences that have a certain degree of fear represented within them. So I think I can do that pretty quickly and fairly easily. Let's go ahead and try it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have something called a sentence model. And this is going to be equal to a blank spacey model, just like up above. And then to this sentence model, we are going to add a pipe, and we're going to add a sentenceizer. So a sentenceizer is just a simple pipe that lets you uh, take in a text 
And all it's going to do is just identify the breaks and sentences. This is the easiest, uh, quickest way to achieve this with Spacey. You don't need a large model to find sentences. So the next thing we have to do is we have to load up our text. So this is in data Harry underscore Potter underscore cleaned dot txt. We're going to read that in as f, and we're going to say text is equal to f dot read. So at this stage, I need to get my sentences. So this is going to be equal to sentence model. So it's just like running NLP here over that text. And what I have now is the ability to iterate over all of these different sentences. So I can say for sentence and sentences dot sense, grabbing each of those, and I can now create a doc object that uses the, the main model here. So I can say doc is equal to NLP dot uh, sentence dot text. And what this will do is it'll perform the categorizer now at a sentence level. And then what I have, let's go ahead and do this. I believe this is a generator, so I don't think it's going to let me do this. Let's go ahead and just see. I can print off doc dot, let's print off doc and then we'll print off doc dot underscore dot period cats. Yeah, it's a, it's a generator. So we can kind of analyze it afterwards and kind of do some uh, kind of quick interrogation of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this up here and let's just save it as, uh, I don't know, um, final data. Why not? And we're going to make just a, uh, a list and it's going to be a list of dictionaries. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say final data dot append and it's going to be uh, the sentence, which is going to correspond to uh, doc.text. And then we're going to also save the cats, which is going to be equal to doc dot underscore dot that cats. There we go. And then I'm going to pause the video right here because this is going to take a little while to run because I've got it loaded up on the CPU and my computer is going to wind up pretty loud. But I'm going to execute this, make sure there's no errors, and then we're going to pop back when this is done and start analyzing the results. Okay, so our uh, sentences have all been analyzed now. And to kind of like examine what's going on here, let's take a look at final data zero. So what final data zero is, it's the first sentence. So we have sentence here, it's a dictionary with a key of sentence corresponding to the text. And then the cats, so the categories, the degree to which that sentence is either fear or furniture. As you can tell from sentence one, it doesn't really deal with either fear or furniture. And as we would expect, because we have to get to one here, so 100%, we've got 49.1% as being tied to the concept of fear and 50.8% being tied to the concept of furniture, all of which combined gives us a number one or 100%. So let's iterate over this. So we can say for item in final data, and let's just grab the first, uh, let's grab, let's go over everything, why not? We're gonna say for item in final data, we are going to print off item and then what we're going to do is we're going to print off, actually, we're going to print off item sentence. So we're going to grab that sentence and then we're going to print off item uh, cats. And let's just iterate over two right here. If we print this off, we see exactly what we expect. We see Mr. and Mrs. Dervisley of number four private drive, and then we have that corresponding data. What's nice about storing this data outside of that initial loop is we can experiment more with our, our thresholding here. So if I wanted to grab fear, I can see the degree to which fear is a category within these cats. And that means that I can start setting up some thresholds. So I can say if item cats and then index it one more deep at the, the category of fear, if that is greater than, let's say, 0.9, only in that or that condition do I want to print off this information. So I can kind of analyze what's happening. And so if we iterate over these first two, we're going to get nothing. But let's see what happens if we just iterate over everything. Ideally, what we'll have here, I'm going to print off a line so we can separate these. I'll do that strip there. Uh, what we'll have are the things that deal with the concept of, of being afraid. Um, Fear of flooded him. That's that's a true positive. Uh, he ruffled Dudley's hair. I would call that not really, in this case, being fear. Ruffled has that context of meaning fear in certain circumstances, but again, not here. And keep in mind when you're looking at these results, we're dealing with three sample sentences that we gave this model. So this is pretty impressive if you're thinking about it in that context. Uh, Dudley's mouth fell open in horror. So this is a great example of why this is a good approach. 
our approach up here was just to find out some drop in three random sentences that express the concept of fear. Not in one of these, not in one of these, do we actually have this word horror. In other words, what it's been able to figure out is Dudley's mouth fell open in horror. When these words are used collectively, they express the concept of fear, as does the word shock. Uh, by nightfall, Dudley was howling. In that context, I can't remember if he was afraid or in pain, um, but he's howling here. Dudley uh, jerked awake, so we're having the concept of coming awake uh, suddenly, and we have he looks suddenly anxious. We're getting a lot of fear here in this uh, in this context. Uh, he looked uh, terrified at the very thought. My point is, if we go down this list, we're able to find a lot of sentences that deal really exclusively with the concept of fear very, very quickly. So what happens if we up this threshold down a little bit? Well, as we get further away from it being uh, closely tied to the concept of fear, the concepts become a bit more abstract, and you're going to have a lot more false positives. So what we're seeing here is 80% this sentence, which clearly is not dealing with the concept of fear. Um, this sentence does. And again, one of the things that you can do to improve this is, of course, get more training or get more data here. That's an annotation of what you label you want to see. And also include more labels than just something like fear and furniture. Include 10 or 15 labels. That way you're able to capture the, a greater nuance and really notice a huge tick up for the concept that you're actually looking for. Uh, so again, as we go down, we're able to see that we have things that deal less and less with the concept of fear. So this is a great way just to kind of get a really quick sense of your data. How do I use this? Well, in my projects, I use this now as a way to kind of A, get a sense of a large quantity of data very, very quickly. And B, I use it as a way to start cultivating pretty quickly some training data that I'll use to train other text classification models. However, out of the box, this does a lot of things really, really quickly and really, really well. I'm not sure if I would use this in production just yet. I haven't played around with it enough, but I thought it was a really cool project and something really worth sharing. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you have enough here to at least get started and play around with this with your own data. Let me know in the comments below how it works for you and what you used it on. I'm really kind of curious. If you get a lot out of this channel, though, uh, please do consider supporting it. As always, thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. If you want to support it, you can join Patreon like they have or join as a YouTube member down below. Thank you for listening.